A lot of different factors at play when you have a situation such as a piece of equipment being stuck in a field. Uh, those situations involve the amount of weight that is on the piece of equipment, and the type and size of the piece of equipment, the situation as far as where the area is that the piece of equipment was stuck. Uh, it could even be the time of day. Uh, those situations do develop and hopefully you're prepared to overcome those uh, problems as they arise. The prime example is the situation we have here where we have a washout that was not present in this field in the spring, but due to over 20 inches of rain throughout the summer, this problem did develop. Our friends at the Purdue University and ex especially Purdue Extension have done a great job of preparing a publication that addressed those dangers and we want to thank them for doing the, putting the work and the ground game into that to develop the publication that gives you illustrations of just how bad situations can be if a producer is not prepared. And Anyone in general that has a piece of equipment that gets stuck, it doesn't matter the size of the equipment, there's always a level of danger that's there. And so we want to provide you with the knowledge to make informed decisions, to have the right equipment on your farm to keep both yourself, your, your hired hands or employees, but more importantly, those involved in the operation in the end safe and to educate those around us about the proper and improper ways to solve extracting equipment problems. Well, today we're going to highlight four main steps. The first uh, situation we're going to show you is the machinery itself being stuck in the washout. You'll see that and obviously the machine will not be able to back out from that situation. The second setup we're going to show you is the improper uh, hookup or extraction technique that typically does occur on farms. And that's not by the farmer's mistake, that's just what you had on hand and you tried to remove that equipment quickly because time is money in production agriculture. So sometimes it's better to step back, take a look. And so the third scene we're going to show you today will be the proper way to hook up approved straps and tackle and clevises that will allow you to extract that equipment equipment safely. And then the last step, we have um, a wrecker on hand and tow service that will show us the proper techniques. We'll go over the tools. We'll have him explain the tools and how you use them in the proper order because no life can have a price tag on it and that's why we're here to help you today to keep everybody safe. Here illustrated we have step two, which is the improper connection of the piece of equipment that's stuck in your extraction technique. Typically this, this is what you'll see on a farm because we run to the house, run to the shop, get whatever piece of equipment we can find. Time is of the essence here, you want to get back in the field. And so what we've done, we've, most combines, especially newer models, do have quick attach points for extracting equipment. So we've just hooked a strap that we had in the back 40 at the shop grabbed that and hooked it up. So that's what we got. This strap right here, Curtis, it has a, uh, all it tells you is it's a maximal vehicle rating of 27.5. It does not have a choker. It does not have a basket. It just tells you a straight rating. And it says its braking resistance is at 55,000 pounds. It's just an average strap that you buy anywhere, any probably farm store, rural store, hardware store versus this one that is shows your rating and it's been tested at a vertical lift of 15.8, a choker weight of 12.6, and a basket rate of 33.5. So you know that this strap has been tested and it's it's a good strap. So we're gonna use this one in the same difference that y'all used a while ago. The only thing of it is we need to make sure that your draw pin is in good shape. It had no cracks, it's not bent, it's not damaged, and only you know that because you operate the equipment. If the, if the draw bar is, or the pin is damaged in some way, we don't want to use it. You'd want to take a chain around this, put a clevis around your strap, and then pull from there. But this is evidently a good draw pin, and you know it's a good draw pin, so we're going to hook it up basically the same way that we had it. And we want to make sure there's no sharp objects 
around the pen or where it can be cut. If there is, you want to wrap it so that it's not cut. All right. Because the more pressure you put on it, the easier it's going to cut it. Okay, the forkers, they took the, the strap, hooked right into this piece of metal, which it has sharp edges on both sides. So therefore, the harder you pull on this, the more strength it's going to put on the corners of the, the strap, more likely it is to break. Basically, just put a shackle in, hook straight up, and now you're pulling on a round piece with metal to metal, and you don't have to worry about getting cut in the strap. If we're looking at a failure in the previous setup, if a piece was to fail, where do you think it's going to fail first? It's going to fail right here. Right here, and that's because you had a sharp metal object on the strap being abrasive to the strap, and that's going to create a break point. That is correct. All right. As once before, now we, we were using the same strap. We've got our shackle on the, on the uh, back of the combine. We've got a shackle here, and we've doubled the strap. But the only difference you can tell you is, is our tow truck now is a lot farther away from the combine, so now we don't have to worry about the combine coming into the back of the tractor. So we've got a lot more working room to deal with than what you do with a tractor. We've got a three-quarter inch cable here, five, a six by 25 cable, run through a snatch block, which uh, increases my power of pulling because I'm running two lines instead of one now. Okay, so essentially what you've done in this process we're illustrating here, you've doubled the strength of your strap and you've also doubled the strength of your pulling power by using your block. Mm -hmm. So this is the best case scenario if you're going to be extracting equipment in the field. Yes, yes, this is the best thing to do here. We'll get the operator of the truck, he'll engage the winches, and then, we'll, and then we'll pull the combine out. But before we do that, we want to highlight the four zones in regards to an operation like this. We've got the stuck zone, and the stuck zone is what we've seen throughout this process where the equipment itself is either mired down or stuck in a, a ditch or a pothole or what have you. So that's our stuck zone. Now, if we move from the stuck zone, what kind of zone are we in here? It looks like we're in the tow zone. The tow zone already can be considered the danger zone. Danger zone. Because for one thing, if anything was to fail on our rigging, somebody's gonna get hurt. And as everybody wants to be right here where the action's at and see what's going on. And as this truck is sitting here, you can see it's too close. It needs to be backed out of the way no person needs to be around this area, no one in the vicinity. They need to be at least 100 feet or better away. And they really, they need to be as far this way instead of this way and this way. Because if anything is gonna fail, it's gonna go one of these two ways. Any piece of equipment could be considered, I guess, shrapnel or flying debris that could hurt somebody. That's right, I mean, this thing, this thing could, it, it, could break. And if it was to break, I mean, it could fly up, it could hit the side of their truck, and it could bounce off and hit something on the side. So right. the farther away you keep people and pedestrians or other pieces of equipment, the better off you are. Well, people are gonna ask that. What do you consider the fourth zone, which is the clear zone? What, what, what to you is a safe area? You know, I like to keep people at least, a, I say, 100 feet or better away. I mean, that's, that's the, on, from side to side. And that's 100 feet from the outside all the way to there. Okay, and typically when you're running your operation and you're, you're setting up your equipment, do you like for the, the people on it in hand to help you with that or do you like to take over and then make sure that everything there, is followed? There's nothing wrong with the farmer trying to help. They're just like anybody else. They don't want me to bring out four or five guys to help if they've got people standing around. Yes, they can help with the rigging. Once the, the rigging is intact, the winches are engaged and ready to pull, they need to stand back and let us do what we need to do. Okay, to wrap up our extraction exercise here today, we wanted to, to take a look at the tools of the trade. And if you have a piece of equipment that you can't doesn't have a draw hook or something to attach to the front of it. We need to go around an axle and what we do is usually dig out and of course we all know we can't push a chain. So we use this right here to slide around one end of the axle, put a clevis in it, hook to the, to the snatch block we showed you earlier and then pull from that way. Um, we also have a, 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 this is what it's called, a, an endless loop. 
when where where before we showed you that that strap in a basket form was 33.5. This is a lot lighter, a lot easier to maneuver, and it's also at a basket. It's rated at 42,400 pounds. They're a lot stronger, and they can you can do a lot more with them. You can throw them around axles. You can throw them around anything. You can throw them around. If you can get one inside of a wheel, whatever. It, but when you do that, you get damages as of this nature where this is a strap that was ill-used that we put out of service. And the reason that was done that was because it did not have a wear pad, a mud flap, or something of that nature that goes around a sharp edge. And if you don't... And these are investment just like this, the, the flat straps. If you protect them, They'll last you forever. So, throw mud. I know all farmers have got mud flaps laying around. If you got a sharp edge and you got one of these, throw a mud flap, throw around it. It'll protect it. And these are and these are just as inexpensive. I say, uh, you know, three or four hundred bucks for one of these things. Why don't you show us some of the other equipment that you've got as well? All chains are stamped. Have one link. It'll have a stamp of grade eight, grade four, grade three. Um, we don't normally use anything lower than a grade eight. And all of our chains, there is no specification for what we do, but uh, the company we buy them from, Vernon Corporation, has, they put a tag on them. And, um, and it's marked with our name, it says Hazelwood. It says the grade that it is, the size that it is, and, and when it was made. We, we hang all of our chains up so they're not laying in, in the water and they don't have to get rusted. And that's the best thing to do is if they're chained. The worst thing to do is throw it in the, in the floor and let it sit there because shop water gets on it and it starts to rust. And you hang your chains up. That's the best thing. We either make sure that it has a good hook, a grab hook. You want to hook the chain back into itself, not under itself. Right. So we've talked about chains. So let's talk about the snatch blocks that you're using as well. We have two three quarter ton. They're 18 ton snatch, or excuse me, 12 ton snatch blocks. And we have, if, if we're doing a large recovery, we keep extras at the shop that we bring with us. When, when you get that initial call from a farmer, what, what is the typical questions that you're going to ask that farmer? Where is the vehicle? Is it off the road, on the road, in the field? Uh, is it buried up to its axles? Is it just the front tires buried? What do we got and what our condition is? That's the main thing we need to know. And is it loaded or empty? In the Purdue publication, they actually have this Wreckmaster chart, and so mm -hmm. I'm curious about um, your use of this chart. Yes, I did use this chart when I started out doing heavy recovery in the beginning, and it is a great chart to go to. Once you've been doing it for a while, you, you pretty well know what you're going to grab and what you're going to hook to. But I wouldn't say that I wouldn't go back to it if I had something out of the ordinary. Touch on briefly the personal protective equipment you use in your operation to keep your hands safe and just body parts, things of that nature. Good leather gloves. I mean, you know, it's common sense. You know, farmers have been around for years. They, they know what they're going to use on their hands. But a good pair of leather gloves when you're doing recovery work is a good thing just to have. Because, you know, you're going to get a cable that's going to have a burr on it or something like that nature. And then plus, when you're doing recovery work, you might have something that you're hot you're dealing with. So, uh, basically, just a good pair of leather gloves. It's what you need. Kevin, we really appreciate Hazelwood Towing and Recovery coming down, spending mm -hmm. the morning with us. Um, you know, certainly, Kevin, allu uh, Curtis alluded to it this morning that we've had a, a really wet summer. I think uh, he recorded roughly 20 inches of rainfall in this area that he had July, uh, probably a little more than that in August. And so, um, like this washout that, that we actually took the combine out of this morning, we're going to see a lot of that um, throughout the western part of the state. Um, just because of the surface ditches that we put in and what have you. But we probably are going to see some situations where that if things continue, um, the weather is going to um, present some obstacles to us. And so we're probably going to need some, yeah. some service from, from folks like you. Yeah. So we certainly appreciate you coming down and spending the time with us. Not a problem.